Well, what's on tap for today, folks? Well, it's none other than one of our favorite senators, Marsha Blackburn, and she is questioning Attorney General Merrick Garland on the DOJ memo. So if this is the first time that you've tuned in, we certainly appreciate it, folks. You're watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your host for today, the guest host. My name is Dr. Shake, and we're going to be doing a reaction video, my reaction to the questioning of Marsha Blackburn and Attorney General, Attorney General Merrick Garland. Let's get right to it, folks. With us today, I have to tell you that it is with much disappointment that I have watched the DOJ be so politicized and the way things have been carried out. Uh, That's one thing for sure, folks. The politicization of the DOJ, the FBI, all these government entities that are supposed to be non-political, that are not supposed to basically put red and blue, Democrat, Republican, conservative, you know, liberal, the application of the law should be applied the same to everybody, but that unfortunately is not happening. We've got levels, tiers, folks, and what I mean is T-I-E-R-S, tiers, levels of where certain people, if you've got money, if you've got fame, if you've got fortune, if you've got power, prestige, as different laws apply to you than the average normal American citizen. And that's exactly what she's talking about here. It started way before, but it really intensified during the Obama administration and just has continued through, especially now, um, you know, with the Biden administration, folks. Let's continue. When you look at the memo to parents, you've heard a lot about that today, and it's because we're hearing a lot about that. And I just have to ask you, I, knowing that you really helped bring to justice those that caused the Oklahoma City bombing, would you really honestly put parents in the same category as a Terry Nichols or a Timothy McVeigh? My God, absolutely not. Then why? Why would you ever release a memo? I mean, did you write that memo? Did staff write that memo? What would have led you to do this? It is so over the top. I love the way Marsha Blackburn does her questioning. I mean, she's just like the concerned parent, the concerned mom, and she's just level-headed She's straightforward, but she's asking the question out of absolute, I mean, she wants to get to the truth. She wants an answer. She, I don't think when she's questioning people, I don't think she's questioning people as a senator or as an attorney. She's questioning parent as just an average woman, mom, you know, aunt, grandmother, Ma, mother, I mean, that's where she's coming from. That's how she's asking these questions. You can feel the questions. You can feel these. It's coming from her heart. She really wants to know. That's what we all want to know, folks, is what the hell happened? How could you write or have somebody else write that memo? If you did staff it out, that's unbelievable. If you wrote it yourself, then say so. But what the hell were you thinking about? There's nothing in the memo that uh, that in any way draws any comparison, anything like that. This delusional. memo is about He's violence and threats delusional. of violence. It's not Sir, I have to tell you that that may be your opinion. And you know, many times perception is reality. And reading that memo myself, Tennesseans reading that memo, what they found in that memo, what they heard you say was if you show up and you question these school boards, you will be deemed a domestic terrorist. You could be investigated by the FBI. I mean, the FBI has a lot of other things that they should be focusing. Absolutely. What the hell is the FBI investigating parents for, for crying out loud? Go after the murderers. Go after the rapists. Go after the serial killers. 
Go after the people, okay, that are crossing over the border illegally. Go after the illegal aliens that are committing murders and rapes and burglaries and, um, you know, I mean, all kinds of crimes against American citizens. Go after them. You're going after parents, for God's sakes. It's unbelievable. On. And the FBI should be there looking at issues like China. Now, the Knoxville FBI has been very concerned about China. Uh, so why, give me a little update. What's the status of the China initiative at DOJ? So, uh, Senator, we are, we regard People's Republic of China as an extraordinarily serious and aggressive threat to our intellectual property, to our universities, uh, okay, that's our, you're stonewalling me on that. We all know they're an aggressive threat. We continue to investigate okay. the uh, PRC efforts to... Um, Do you see them as an adversary? I see them as adversarial with respect to our... Uh, of course he doesn't see them as an adversary. Come on now, okay? He's chumming it up to China. If that was the case, wouldn't you be looking into the Hunter Biden laptop? Wouldn't you be looking into the allegations of Hunter Biden in China? The Chinese bank that gave over a billion dollars to his venture capital company, allegedly? How about the millions of dollars that came from the Russian um, princess or somebody over in Russia? It was $3 million for a shopping for the mayor of one of the cities or towns in Russia. Are you investigating that? Are you investigating anything else from China? Oh, intellectual property. Oh, whoop the freaking do Well, we're glad you're doing something on that. But you're still going after parents. You have time to go after parents with everything else. Um, uh, ransomware with respect to hacking our... our okay. uh, with respect to counterintelligence, with respect to counterespionage, well, we all know those that ways. Over the last several months... The last nine months, several espionage prosecutions of researchers have been dropped. Our charges have been dismissed, including those of a UT professor at UT Knoxville. And of course, the Huawei case is there. So this is in spite of the fact that Director Ray recently testified that the FBI opens a new Chinese espionage investigation every 12 hours. So are there apparent failures of the initiative? Is it a lack of leadership? Or is it a compromise position with the administration? Is it incompetence? Uh, every case is evaluated on its own with respect to the law and the fact. Um, we continue to open cases uh, involving the People's Republic of China. Uh, daily, as the as the director said, uh, we will not in any way let up our concerns about okay. uh, uh, Chinese. All right, I want to move on. I'm glad to know you're not going to go soft on China because this administration is going soft on China. Uh, on your directive, going back to the school board association and the directive that you sent out, the NSBA has apologized. Are you planning to apologize to the parents of this country? There Moms nothing, and dads. There is nothing in this memorandum that any parent should be concerned about. Uh, there's a lot. BS. That's total, 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 absolutely total BS there, Merrick. And you, you don't even have the you don't even have the courtesy to apologize. The National School Board Administration apologized, and many of their members pulled out. They said, We're not gonna pay our dues, we're not gonna join up with the NSBA, we're out. A stupid letter that you guys wrote to the Biden administration, the Biden administration colluding with the DOJ to have this stupid memo written. And then you have the nerve, the audacity, the temerity to sit there in Congress and to absolutely say, OK, that you're not going to apologize for a memo that you wrote that basically likens, OK, parents of this country because they're concerned about their kids being taught, you know, triple X pornographic books and being read to. And then being told that they're, you know, bigots and racists and all kinds of things. And that if they have to bring these concerns to the light to the public at a school board meeting, which you have every right to do as American citizens, their First Amendment rights with free speech, 
you basically write down 12 or 13 points where they could be arrested by the FBI or investigated. It's BS, Merrick. That parents should be in, uh, concerned about it. Let me ask you about the Durham investigation because 44 senators joined me in a letter that we sent to you uh, in August and we still have not received a written response from you on the status of the Durham. This happens every freaking time. Whenever the Congress writes a letter, the senators write a letter, the attorneys write a letter demanding information, demanding documents being turned over, they never freaking get an answer to that. They just, everybody on in the government just stonewalls them because they know nothing is going to happen. A, semi, a subpoena is as good as a piece of toilet paper that's already being used. Invest investigation. So will you provide for me a written status report re of the Durham investigation? Anything. So the, the particular aim, I think, of the letter asked about the budget. And as I said at the House committee, Mr. Durham is continuing. And the only we asked for a status update. Well, I, and we also ask that the report be made public, available to the public on the completion of his yes. work. Will that be made public? So on both of those questions, his budget has been approved, as okay. already announced. And with respect to the report, I would like as much as possible to be made public. I have to be concerned about Privacy Act concerns and classification. But other than that, the, the commitment is to provide a public report, yes. Can you guarantee this committee that uh, Special Counsel Durham has free reign to proceed wherever his investigation takes him without any political or otherwise undue influence or interference? Yeah, there'll be no political or otherwise undue interference. Okay, with Susan Tennessee. Oh, yeah. You know what he's doing right now? Come on. You know what, Marcia? You got to check underneath the table. Here's what he's doing. He's answering your questions like this. There will be no undue influence. There will be completely impartial. We promise not to interfere with John Durham's investigation. Did you notice that his legs are crossed, his body is contorted, his fingers are like this? Come on. Investigation. She, Susan Hennessy was recently hired to work in your National Security Division. This is a troubling hire because of her political bias. She has made several comments that show she is incapable of working impartially on sensitive matters within the National Security Division, particularly on the Durham investigation. For example, December 1st, 2020, Ms. Hennessy stated, and I am quoting, Durham has made abundantly clear that in a year and a half, he hasn't come up with anything. I guess this kind of partisan silliness has become characteristic of Barr's legacy, but unclear to me why Durham would want to go along with it, end quote. So how can... And you need this done by... be certain that she is going to be fair and impartial when she is on the record making those statements. So has she retracted that statement? Do you intend to ask her to retract that statement? I have to confess, I don't think I've even ever met Ms. Hennessy, and she has nothing whatsoever to do well, with Well, you may want to look at <laughs> I never met the person. I have no idea who you're talking about. I don't have a freaking clue as to who this person is. She's part of the National Security Division, but you know what? I don't know. I didn't hire her. <laughs> her. She is there in your National Security Division, and she is very much opposed to this. Uh, I want to thank you for your time. I am going to send a couple of questions to you for more complete answers, but I associate myself with the comments by my colleagues that the border issues have turned every town into a border town and every state into a border state. The amount of drugs, the amount of trafficking that is flowing in here, talking to local law enforcement, the way they're looking at the cartels. Mr. Attorney General, 
There is a lot that needs to be done to secure this, this country and the parents of the kiddos in our school, they are not the problem. There are other problems Bingo. that need your attention. And folks, what, how, she put it right at the very end, absolutely perfect. That there are other things that need attention, Attorney General. Look at our borders, how porous they are. Why not put a ton of agents, okay, down on the border to prosecute and bring across, okay, the drugs that are pouring over? Why don't you, why don't you have the FBI agents go after some of the cartel members that are crossing over the border? Human trafficking, doesn't that count? Smuggling of humans, smuggling of drugs? What about um, assault? What about murder? What about rape? These are all serial things that are occurring on our border. As Marcia said, every town, every city in America is becoming a border town, a border city, a border state because of the allowance of the American government, of this administration, to allow illegal aliens just to basically free reign, come on through. And drugs, they don't care. We know this. This is unbelievable. And these guys, Merrick Garland, FBI, it's become so politicized right now and weaponized politically. That's what's occurred, the DOJ and the FBI. And that is scary, folks. That is scary. You know that, and I know that. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. We hope you enjoy this reaction video. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your guest host for today. My name is Dr. Shake. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel, please. Hit that notification bell. Like, share, and follow us. You know what to do. And I'll leave you with my final thought, as I always do. And that is, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. We'll see you again next time, folks. Take care and stay safe.